So, what's hot in human evolution? What's going on? Um, people are always finding fossils. The, um, this last year has been, has been eventful because of Artificus being, being published, but that was nearly a year ago. And then in this year, the fossils from a cave called Malapa in, in South Africa. So, Ardipithecus, the people that found Ardipithecus reckon it's the earliest hominin. And the people that find the fossils from Malapa think that it's a sort of an Australopithecine, Australopith, which is on the way to being Homo. What's interesting is that everybody that finds a fossil wants it to be a direct ancestor of humans either the, the first ancestor in terms of the first hominin after the common, after the common ancestor of chimps, bonobos and modern humans, or they want it to be an australopith but on the way to being homo. I think, I think it's interesting why people want their fossils to be ancestors. Um, I think the reality is that most fossils aren't ancestors. And I don't think Ardipithecus is ancestral to hominins. And I somehow doubt that the fossil from Malacca is ancestral to Still, they are humans. very interesting. But, but, but they're very interesting. In many ways, they would be more interesting if they weren't ancestors. So it intrigues me why, why people f force them into this role of an ancestor. Which, which immediately, in some ways, makes them less interesting. Um, but but that's the way it is, and I guess you you get you you know you get marks for having papers in science and science. Yeah, Both you, those papers were in science. You make the paper. With the you, you make the paper, and everybody gets. You know, everybody's happy. Science is happy. You're happy. The people who pay your salary are happy. But but the. Um, I think the reality is that I mean, if you were interested in if you were interested in the evolution of antelopes or in the evolution of of, of elephants, you wouldn't be concerned to make each an, each antelope you found or each elephant you found ancestral to a living one, because you know the chances of that being the case are probably extremely small. So so uh, so why why paleoanthropologists? want ancestors is, is, is an interesting question in itself. I think that really deserves study. But the, the, the other thing, of course, is, the, is, is getting more genomic information out of Neanderthal fossils. And that will help. I mean, we're beginning to understand what the differences are between chimps and bonobos and modern humans. But if we can work out what the differences are between Neanderthals and modern humans, it then means you can take those differences away and then you know that what's left must have somehow evolved between the common ancestor of chimps, bonobos and modern humans and the common ancestor of Neanderthals and modern humans. So, so it enables you to maybe find out what, is, what the genetic basis of modern humanness is as opposed to Neanderthalness is. Um, Everybody thinks that Neanderthals are specialized, but in some ways modern humans are specialized. It's, 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 it's the modern humans that are probably, they're probably more specialized than the Neanderthals. But there's lots of things going on which, which don't make the journals, the, the paleoanthropological journals, there are, there are people doing very interesting Mouse, mouse genetics, which is helping people understand um, how, what are the constraints on the evolution of the skull? What, what, you know, why, why do you, why do we, why do we tend to find some changes quite often in the fossil record, and some changes you never see in the fossil record? Is this because is there a genetic reason for this, or is this the the or is there some other reason? Is it natural selection or is it genetic constraint? And so 
in many ways, the, the most interesting science that's relevant to modern humans is probably occurring, the evolution of, of us is probably occurring in mouse labs or mouse genetics labs. Or um, There are some interesting researchers who are interested in paleoanthropology who understand the importance of these sorts of things. So those studies don't make the headlines, but in many ways they're more interesting and probably more significant.